Hello and welcome to Breakfast with Pelle, Daniel and the Working Class History Book. My name is Pelle. And my name is Daniel. And we're a son and father who like to read working class history, everyday acts of resistance and rebellion, often together while we eat breakfast. We usually start by one of us reading out the entries for that day and then asking each other questions and thinking about what those events mean to us today. We're often unfamiliar with the event or with the context, but we're always in the conversation feeling a little bit wiser. For the Anarchist Pedagogies Network Festival, School Revolt 2022, we thought we'd share some of those conversations with you. Okay, hi everyone. Today it's March 14th and we're going to read the two entries from Working Class History for that particular day. So do you want, do you want to read it, Pella, or shall I? Uh, you, you. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so March 14th, 1970. So that's four years before I was born. By the way. Two sailors, Alvin, Alvin Glukowski and Clyde McKay, mutinied to protest the war and took control of the SS Columbia Eagle, which was carrying 10,000 tons of napalm for the US military in Vietnam. They then sailed the ship to Cambodia, which was neutral at the time, to prevent the cargo being used. Initially, they appeared to have have succeeded as the Cambodian government agreed to their demands and gave them asylum. But unfortunately for the mutineers, just days later, there was a military coup and, new, and a new pro-US re- regime took power. Glukowski and McKay were locked up and the ship handed back to US forces. McKay managed to escape from prison and joined Khmer Rouge guerrillas in the countryside. The guerrillas later killed him. Glukowski eventually returned to the US and was jailed for 10 years. Hmm. What's a coup? So yeah, this so it, it talks about a military coup. It's basically in this case where the military take over for maybe a variety of reasons, but they take over take control. Over yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then usually what happens is there's a period where the military controls things and then another um, let's say government steps in, right? Yeah. So it describes the other government as a pro-US regime. So you know, it wouldn't have been like voted in, but probably people put in into government yeah um yeah uh also did did took over they took till till they skulle bombe et sted och så tog de över flyga eller skipet tog över skipet de skulle bombe it's not like you this will move on super this will move me or stick to the boot stick to the boot fra stick to the boot fra som stop it so they can play for the nap on my health that very extreme motto or or the po yeah exactly this is the little so that for the tank to the other they will care that yeah, I mean, I'm thinking just like the risk they took then, right? So they take over this military ship, yeah. right? Like you say, it's like got it says ten thousand tons of napalm. Uh, I mean, it, yeah, yeah, and it's on its way to Vietnam. Uh, that's kind of one of the, if you like, the wars that you know, um, it's kind of well known for. Yeah, and its use or the the US use of of napalm. It's been used other places, but but it's particularly well known there, yeah. and how uh, how it's, destructive it's, it was. There and they must shunt the key, you know. Yeah, so they took over the ship. You know, that's kind of a risk. You know, they risk being like court martial, maybe even like I, I'm assuming like sentenced to death as well could be like the the, the punishment. For yeah, like, for the devil or or be sentenced 
det er fortsatt lov å bli, å bli til death i Amerika nå. Ja, yeah, there are some states in the US that have the death penalty. Ja, yeah, her var det alle. Mm. Ja, det var alle i den tiden. Ja. Yeah. Så de tog en väldigt stor risk att göra det. Det var väldigt eller väldigt tufft gjort då. Ja. Yeah. Att de fick att de tog det. Gjorde. That's right. Actually, um, working class history have a podcast on this. And About you, om den där. Yeah, yeah. If you look closely in the book, you can see there's a little reference. Yeah. Um, which I listened to uh, a while back. It was really interesting. And yeah, obviously it took some planning as well. So the two who who carried this out, you know, took a long time. Oh, they were very careful in how they how they did this and they had like a pretty good plan in place. Um, yeah, very kind of like dangerous, but um, also incredible, you know, thinking about like putting out in a way out, out of action all those, all that, all that napalm. Mm. Because we've talked a little bit about napalm, right? Uh, mm. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what connection it was in, but when, maybe when we've talked about Vietnam before. Yeah. 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 Dödlig, vår dödlig um, napalm är. Yeah. Vår, vår, vår en otroligt dålig måte där och då på. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean it... Det är väldigt vondt. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's like a, um, it's like they call it like a petrochemical. So it's like it's like petrol or gasoline, right? But it burns like yeah. at a much higher temperature and uh, yeah, like so yeah, it destroys yeah. a lot more. And it's also I think like kind of like sticky if you can describe it in that way. So it sticks to things oh. when it burns them, and of course that includes people, right, or, and other animals. So it's it's just. <sighs> Really. Ja, så det är inte bara så människor som dör, det är många djurliv som blir helt utslättet. Yeah, I mean a lot of this was like dropped in like I think in like uh, forest Skog, or jungle yeah. areas, yeah. So like mange, yeah, you would destroy mange. like uh, huge parts of the uh, of the uh, of the landscape essentially with this with these with these bombs, mm. yeah. Hmm. Kanske vi borde gå vidare till till uh, March 14th, 2018. Yeah, good idea. So, yeah, March 14th, 2018. It says here, uh, Marielle Franco, a bisexual Afro-Brazilian socialist and feminist, was assassinated in Rio de Janeiro. Raised in a favela or shanty town in the city, she began work at the age of 11 and later raised a daughter as a single mother working for the minimum wage before being elected to the city council in 2016. Mm. The day before her murder, she'd spoken out against extrajudicial killings by police and paramilitaries. The bullets that killed her had been purchased by the federal police. The Minister of Public Security claimed that the bullets were stolen from a post office, but this lie was retracted when the post office publicly stated it was untrue. At the time of writing, four suspects have been arrested for the murder all with ties to state security forces, and two of them with links to the family of right-wing President Jair Bolsonaro. Another suspect, a former police officer, was shot and killed by police in February 2020 as they were attempting to arrest him. Mm. So, yeah, this takes place in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Yeah, it was not so long ago. That's right, yeah. It's... Um, but no, him. Exactly, yeah. Four years ago. Mm-hmm. And... Um, yeah, n- 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 exactly four years ago. Exactly four <laughs> years ago, yeah. Um, On this day. A really tragic story of somebody who I think was very well liked in uh, the city by a lot of people, particularly in the area where she came from, these, these uh, shanty towns in and around the city. Um, so, yeah. And... Then of course being killed shortly after speaking out against you know the kinds of like uh, crimes that are committed by by uh, by uh, the state police the federal police. Right? Mm. We've also we've talked about this one before because I remember we uh, we 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 talked a little bit about this this about the bullets. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. At the the som bless brukt ble skutt av um, av någon personer som inte är er politiet. Men 
Or selve, maybe we don't know, right? No, nej, det vet vi inte. Men själva Ammon var från politiet. Ja. Yeah. Var från politiet, politiet som som de kanske stelte för. Vi vet inte, stelte för eh, posten. Mm. Guess I remember the thing that you once asked me about this one was you said, well, of course the post office would say. <laughs> that they weren't stolen and i thought like i thought it would be differently to you because my first response was like well no if they were stole if they were stolen okay that would be fine but here the the poster says no this is a lie but yeah, then you yeah. kind of had this interesting point which is maybe not that relevant here to the to the uh, entry but they probably have yeah they more would see that yeah what why do you think they have to reason <laughs> Kanske sånn som de ikke kan se dårlig ut de andre. Yeah. Mm. Folk som de ikke vil gi de tingene. Da folk tror at de har dårlig security, og folk bare tar tingene yeah. enkelt. Det er sånn, jeg vet ikke. Ja, yeah. I mean, I think here what's especially kind of tragic with this is, you know, like somebody who's clearly like very much kind of engaged in politics, local politics, trying to make things better, right? Yeah. And, you know, Basically, the, you know, she's she's risking a life for doing that, and of course, she ends up losing a life or being murdered, right? Mm. Because of taking a stand and because of trying to make things better. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, totally. Okay. Well, that's the, those are the two entries for today, right? Mm. March fourteenth. Um, mm. I guess we'll uh, read, uh, go through March fifteenth tomorrow. Yeah. It was some long ones today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Wow.